Don't worry, life is strangers. I got y'all, bro. I'm not gonna leave y'all like that, Welcome bro. To the kill I cat, promise. Where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, I'll and today we're we'll looking to dedicate the time, to, like, like in during the beginning of the stream, to life is strange. If y'all want me to, with the massive success of the first movie, a sequel was inevitable, but not for United Artists, the studio that made the original. They I'm were being acquired off. by Australian company Quintex Group, who thought horror movies would be a bad two episodes for them. tomorrow. Thanks to a call from Steven Spielberg, promise. the Chucky rights went to Universal. Or one and a half. They remain today. Uh, the original two is crazy. Would stay with MGM. At least the whole episode. Allowed them to do the 2019 remake. Series creator Don Mancini returned to write the screenplay. This time receiving sole screenwriting credit. His script moved Chucky <laughs> out crazy. of the city and into the suburbs, with production filming at Universal Studios in California. It's a setting change that works, though I do miss Chicago and all the on-location exterior shots that lent the first film so much character. Mancini was joined by his pal and Chucky's designer, producer David Kirshner. Since Kirshner wanted to avoid tension with the director, like he had on the first film with Tom Holland, nope, not that one, he chose a friend to direct the sequel, John Lafia, who had done a pass on the first movie script. Lafia got along better with Kirshner and Mancini, and together they decided on a much more stylized look. As opposed to the first movie's natural lighting, Child's Play 2 has harsher shadows and a lot more color all over the place. Lafia also helped create the movie's award-winning music box ad campaign. Sorry, Jack. What is the most iconic scary movie to y'all, though? Iconic. Chucky's back. At times, however, Lafia's shots feel limited and repetitive. So many are long and unbroken, occasionally with wonky blocking. And I get a little tired of all the wide lens, low angle shots with Scream, something huge Friday, in the foreground. 13. It's relentless. But that's literally Bro, all like I have movies, to say. Please watch that black phone movie. movie and just Child's DM me your. Ooh, thanks like, to its characters, please. the incredible final act, and the much more prominent presence of Chucky. I think the unseen mystery of the killer doll works perfectly for the first film. For a sequel, though, I want to see him right off the bat, and Child's Play 2 delivers. We gotta have little movie bastards night again. everywhere, yet doesn't overstay his welcome. This movie clocks in at a cool 84 minutes, and only 10 of those are spent on Chucky's incantation dictation. Adi <laughs> Give me the power, I beg of you! While Chuck provides the movie's blood, its heart comes courtesy of Andy Barkley and his new foster sister Kyle. Christina Lise is perfect as the tough, jaded teenager who warms up to her little brother, and Child's Play struck gold <laughs> Boy, with Alex Vincent night. twice in a row. He was able to evolve from the innocent, cute kid he was at six into a world-weary, beat-down, honestly morose eight-year-old. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, Black Phone isn't super scary. It's just the plot is super realistic to the point where it can actually happen in real life. And I feel like that they caught the way that it would happen, not even knowing. Or I feel like, in bro, the way that they had that movie set up, I feel like, bro, it feels like that's exactly how it happens. Like, you know what I'm saying? NGL STFU. Okay. Wherever I go. I'm just a movie Alex analyst. Vincent My remembers fault. feeling like the sequel's success was his responsibility, even as a seven-year-old actor. This thing depends on me. Um, the first one was a hit. Can I make it a hit again? I'm older now. I'm mm. not as cute as I was. Well, so who could be, hey, Alex? The first Child's Play movies Show are both very look. strong, each in their own unique way. But lending a huge hand to both is Alex Vincent's kid acting. Chucky would not have been a phenomenon without Andy Barkley to play off of. The first movie only had five kills, which seems like Child's Play. Let's find out if Chucky can outdo himself when he doesn't have to hide half the film. Saying that with the a Chucky doll behind you is kind of bold. Chucky's getting fixed up, so he'll look nice and proper for this movie's title card. Doll really needed it, too. Been way more than six months since his last checkup. What I love about this credit sequence is that it shows a bit of the work that goes into making like going something to the dinner tangible. Chat? Sure, the plastic doll they're constructing here is nowhere near the mechanical marvel that is the Chucky animatronic. But it's still a nice reminder that the practical I things love you going see to the require now. lots of effort and care. I always like to acknowledge that. A limo pulls up to the good guy factory and drops off PlayPal CEO Mr. Sullivan. I like In a Sorkin-style walk and talk, we learn the Andy Barkley incident has caused the company some trouble. They mention that the police have denied seeing what they did, something hinted towards in the last movie. You believe me now? Yeah. Whoever say no leaving in the UK. As for Karen Barkley, you would never betray her son like oh that. Oh my god, her. wait, has the chat been on sub mode this whole time? Oh my god. This whole time? 
Yo, since it's like we on dead me and we chilling, like let let the do boys out, man. Do boys, my fault, bruh. You see, at least I don't be forgetting about y'all. I be realizing, bro. I just be wanting to see him, bro. You know, it's good to see him. Appear in a court scene, but it was cut just before filming began. Catherine Hicks still spent a lot of time. Be moving like slow and don't be changing. Returned as Chucky's lead puppet. The entire stream. Auto-loving, <laughs> deep hit fondling little Toadie is Matson. My bad, Shows man. off how they've rebuilt the Chucky doll. Better, stronger, faster. All to appease the stockholders and show that nothing is wrong. I'm not entirely sure how Charles Lee Ray's soul transfers into it, though. I guess it has the same servo motors? I don't know, man. Just go with it. Turns out the eyes are the windows to Chucky's soul and a double the oh, doll creepy. technician. Electric currents surge through a machine and cook this guy's goose before tossing him through a window. Yeah, I love it. Although, like with Ardmore in the last movie, I could do with a bit better death face makeup. Sullivan yells at Matson for his ridiculously large tie and tells him to make sure that kill don't made find no out sense. about this mishap. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with the they doll? They just wanted to die early. Stick it up. Chucky's head way too big to be doing that, dude. A now eight-year-old Andy Barkley is in the foster system, where he's set to be taken care of by Joanne and Phil Simpson. They're apparently MB what type parents, would I be if I had a plot in a scary me. movie like a, a resting grimace face? A he is not an attentive driver. Gig Careful, in a man. scary you movie. You don't want to kill Andy Barkley. That's someone else's job. Joanne Simpson is played by Jenny Agater, who wasn't an American werewolf in London. Stay tuned. Phil Simpson is played by veteran actor Garrett Graham, who we saw in a bit part way back in Chopping Mall. They take the little traveling salesman to their absolute nightmare of a home. I know I ragged on Karen Bro, Barkley's. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I'm. I, I, I feel like my acting skills would be actually to a leap for me to die first <laughs> the funny black guy no boy stop Relax. the last movie but the simpson home is hideous maximalist why is it so pink it looks like if the bunny costume from a christmas story were a room it looks like a room from an extended cut of squid game it looks like what you'd see after clicking a zillow a link that said open for too? a surprise it's also the worst possible place for a child to be like why are you keeping your fragiles on tables that are specifically kid height you wouldn't do that with all those mickey mouse collectibles joanne this look and feel was purposefully done by production designer evo who also brought Perfection Nevada to life when he worked on Tremors, which came out the same year. Combining uh, his work with trick movie. angles, it makes everything feel like it's from a kid's perspective. That's why we get all those extra large objects shot with wide lenses from low again. angles. This childlike tone is supported by Grem Revelle's score, which memorably uses a lot of music boxes. <laughs> Andy's introduced to Kyle, another kid the Simpsons are fostering. She's mm. played by Christina Lease, who is similar to the character in real life. She describes it as tough chick with a heart of gold. She also said she had to be on her game acting opposite a doll. As the actor in the scene with him, you have to be 100% on your game in every single take, because the take that he gets right is the one they're going to use. No matter what, if you sucked horribly, but the doll got it, that's the one they're going to use. Andy's mm. room here is pretty dope, with about a thousand bucks worth of toys waiting for him. Too bad there's also a good guy with a swanton from the top shelf by god that doll is broken and high off of course this isn't chucky hi i'm tommy it's tommy so try to stifle the trauma there champ matson leaves the factory for a shift at grace loan memorial no, I wish but not before taking me. care of chucky Real not trauma. the way Sullivan told him to. Told you, man, that head's too big for all that. As Matson stops for drinky poos, Chucky takes advantage of his Show car phone and calls up is. Grace Poole, the head of the foster home, on the world's largest red television. Yo, if Chucky, if you wake up and Chucky right next to you, what you doing to it? Phone. Thing feels like it'd be a prop in a They Might Be Giants music video, just as soon as Big Brother was done using it. Chucky finds out where Andy is located simply by saying he's his Uncle Charles. <laughs> Great security there, Grace Poole, but I guess to Jane Eyre is human. <laughs> Up, that I might Kellen, threatens Matson from the back seat of his car. I know it's supposed to be like Matson <laughs> doesn't yeah. know he's gonna up right, but, but that, that still off that as a dude who's who completely really nonchalant at the me? sight of a sentient doll. Hey, take it easy. Please don't. He doesn't shoot, bullets that is, but he does come closer to being the Lakeshore Strangler again when he suffocates Matson with the most beautiful thing he's ever seen. No, I At this say point, this was Chucky's movie still with the not doing one-liners after each kill. A simple evil laugh suffices for now. <laughs> Chucky first person runs his way to the Simpsons home, but skips the couch gag to listen as Joanne sings her little railway child to sleep. <laughs> Oh, 
sounds like he's a fan of Outlander. Chucky finds out his ex got a new man who looked just like him, and he fixes that problem by smashing Tommy's face with a porcelain tchotchke. Hope that wasn't meant to be mean, since after the first movie's director, Tom Holland. Still not that one. Chucky buries Tommy's corpse beneath the backyard swing in a cool overhead shot that uses the returning Ed Gale in a costume. There are way Brothers fewer shots with Gale in Child's Play 2, since director John LaFia didn't like how they looked in the original movie. He instead wanted to rely on the improved animatronics, which used smaller motors, fewer cables, and more computer assistance. Unlike in the first movie, where Brad Dourif had to overdub Jessica Walters' lines, he recorded Chucky's dialogue ahead of production, so they could match the doll's mouth movements to it on set. A, B, C, D. The kids get in trouble for the broken statue, and Andy overhears Phil talk about him. He may need more, uh, attention than we can get <laughs> This is another example of this movie's weird this blocking. Is so it would clearly be visible to them, but at the end of this long shot, he just walks out the door and gets completely ignored like they never even saw him there. Oh, no, don't care about him. After all, they keep the poor kid's trigger around. Watch it there, Chuckster. He almost blew it. Good thing he remembered to put batteries in his back, or else Andy would have caught him just like his mama did. Although his foster parents kind of suck, at least his foster sister Kyle is cool. She's so cool, she smokes. But that is not behavior to emulate, oh my young God. man. Didn't you watch the cartoon Yo, All smoke, Stars? Kids. The relationship between Andy and Kyle is one of my favorite that boy just parts got a of the whole series. He's mature for his age, but as he's grown older, that intelligence has given way to somberness. Only eight, and he's already learned how unfair the world can be. Enter Kyle, who's been hardened after bouncing around the foster system, but whose cool exterior isn't immune Yo, to Andy and his Yo, can somebody give me that in your stomach clip backwards? from Kevin Gates? I'm trying to see that before I get off to him. She grows to respect him enough to offer him real-world advice instead of talking down to him like a little kid. The only one I can count on is myself. Okay, and you have to learn that now. It's also mm. nice to hear that Christina Lee and Alex Vincent got along like real true. siblings on set. Night comes, and Chucky Scary makes like a little fusion, tying Andy quotes. to the bed with jump ropes. He's finally revealed himself, because much like Jigsaw, he wants to play a game. It's called Hide the Soul, and guess what? You're it. Oh cool, new game! Hard, How do we play? Aw, Chucky. I saw this one. Kyle comes in from her dates with Dylan and then Brandon, and I guess assumes Andy did this to himself. What, uh, what kind of stuff are you into there, Kyle? I love how Andy punches Chucky down as soon as he I also love all of Kyle's reactions in this scene. You actually tied this child up so we wouldn't tell on you. Is that it? Oh, come that on, like ninja. That's enough Chucky. now. Andy and his totally bad soul shirt are safe for now, but Chucky will have to win himself some hide the soul soon. He's already turning human again in his new doll body. The next day, Kyle and Andy are walking the streets of Haddonfield. Oh my god, for? I just the kicked boogeyman. the doll Kyle face Kyle meets in, up with bro. a long-haired Zorin, and Andy heads off to school on the bus, not knowing that Chucky's hitched a ride to join him. Glad he's coming, though. Andy needs a better dodgeball opponent than this stupid fence. Andy's teacher, Ms. Kettlewell, is the average adult in his life, and after doubting his commitment to sparkle motion, things get worse when she sees his paper with a note from Chucky, or possibly <laughs> Freddy Krueger. Kettlewell is played by Beth Grant, who was told to take the role by her friend Dinah Madoff, Aunt Maggie from the first film. Grant took inspiration for her character from Nancy Reagan, which Yo, matched that's the no bro. button she was given by the costume department. In another example of how Don Mancini treats his <laughs> cast and crew like a family, he went to Grant's house after her daughter was born and cooked grits for the new mother. Grant's husband, Michael Chifo, was then cast as a security guard in Child's Play what? 3. He's family, like he makes everybody family. Kettlewell locks Andy in the classroom, possibly as a sacrifice to Willy Weasel. And while Yo, she's gone, Chucky starts screaming from the closet. Andy's like, thanks, I'm out of here. Peace! Peace. Nah, man, you scary! Kettlewell returns and thinks it's Andy in the closet, so she opens the door and gets attacked by Chucky, no, who's gonna pop not? her up! In two absolutely awesome displays of Chucky's animatronics, he stalks towards a terrified Ms. Kettlewell. He kills her with a yardstick. Yes, a yardstick, not a ruler. In a series of shots that pull out with each strike. Great bit of direction there. If Those two shots of Chucky stick, were I swear his so God, I will be so shot. John you know how to easy it the is amazing to grab that? I'd say it was worth it. Lafia spent so much time two, two shots that production fell behind schedule. This caused a number of problems, including last-minute script rewrites that cut character moments for Phil and Joanne. Garrett Graham and Jenny Agater were reportedly pissed oh, about yeah, she it. Did and already Cini says Agater once called this movie the low point of her career. She was not a happy camper on that movie because 
you know, the script, she had, she lost, which, you know, for her were some crucial scenes to her character. That night, knowing Chuck to the basement, you and he takes went things into frame. his own hands uh, correct, with an electric sir, knife. A curry Aha, bone. look at me, I'm Leatherface. Curry the noise is heard by Phil. Ardent the critic comes downstairs right as Andy Yo, that was scares a crazy Chucky night, away, bro. so all he sees is a cute kid with a knife. He doesn't see night. Chucky hooking his leg from beneath, knocking him down the stairs. How's it hanging, Phil? The quips begin. Chucky drops him on his tech neck, killing him instantly. Oh. Horrific for Joanne to find her husband as a pile of dead beef. The accident turns her against Andy once and for all. Get away from me! to take Andy back to the foster home, so he says goodbye to Kyle and the bubblegum vomit house. He warns her about Chucky on his way out, so later she tosses the doll in the trash like a creep show comic. But what's this? Beneath the swing, the Tommy good guy with his face smashed in? Perhaps Andy was right after all. With Chucky having vacated Oscar's Airbnb, Kyle arms herself and heads upstairs, following the sound of a sewing machine. She finds Joanne dead and bound, with red paint on her neck. Oh, I guess her throat slit? And she's so pale. Chucky jumps out out, and Kyle puts up a fight, but he eventually gets the upper hand. Still working on the whole quip thing, though. You hurt me. <laughs> Chuck forces Kyle to drive him to the foster building, which gives us more great Chucky moments. I especially like Yo, when I'm a gets excited to see Funny a good guy. guy doll. What's your name, buddy? Chucky. <laughs> We also get a reference to Don Mancini's original script back when it was called Blood Buddies. You seen dolls that pee? This one bleeds. In that version of Child's Play, Chucky was called Buddy and had synthetic blood like how some real life dolls can pee. Andy mixed his blood into the doll, which came to life as his murderous id, killing people whom Andy was mad at. Child's Play 2 oh was a God, chance for bro. Don Mancini how the to almost show? reboot his Christmas original Christmas, script. For That's why it real downplays session, the voodoo play, aspect, uh, even though up. they had to stick with the incantation the stuff to maintain with continuity. Prom. As stated previously, Mancini was never a fan. But oh, it's I interesting. Do, I'm to Yo, thank you, Blue. I appreciate you. But you embraced uh, it. Ade Due Tempola. But you, yeah, yes, we had yes. No, no choice but to embrace this it. Mancini was What's also the best show to y'all right now? I'm gonna get, right when I get off stream, I'm gonna watch it. I've been trying to watch more shows. Being on set. For Child's Play like, 2, I watch a lot of movies, there but there's no Lafia. more movies Mancini to watch. I don't watch every single John movie that I can think of that's good. I tried to watch The Sopranos, but too old, experienced like the, as a director, I don't know, bro, it's like schedule, one of those type of, began it's like Breaking complain. Bad, David like, Kirshner remembers I comforting Lafia as he started to crack under the pressure. It's good, though. I just remember one day just holding him as, as he sobbed. I'm about to and, watch The Boys. Uh, he's a very sensitive person. As, I need a prom account. You know, I need to make one. Uh, or I think I got one already. Is. We tragically lost it's on Amazon Prime, Prime, right? 2020 when he died of suicide by hanging. Rest in peace, man. Kyle uses physics to rid herself of the killer doll, but she's overzealous trying to crush him with the car. She loses track of him, leading to the second scene in four minutes to end with Chucky holding a knife to her neck. At I haven't seen time, the boys he's got a better quip. Play at all. Times over. I've heard Catch about rays. it. They go to the foster home and empty it out using a fire alarm, kind of like the ending of Kindergarten Cop. And then Andy enters the scene wearing the exact same outfit as Miko Hughes in Kindergarten Cop. I'm seeing that accurately, right? I don't have a tumor. From Aaron. It's not a tumor. Okay, good. <laughs> Continuing the trend of this movie's adults being crappy, Grace Poole has no big love for Kyle, so she blames and berates her for the fire alarm stunt. Try not to hold a grudge, lady. Grace Poole is played by Grace Zabriskie, who was in Twin Peaks and who was recently the fortune teller <gasps> in the oh! quarry. Still gotta God. finish that playthrough. In the office, Grace has barely begun her scolding when That's Chucky attacks fuck. and kills her by stabbing her in the chest. Yo, we heard you like dead Grace face, so we got dead Grace face to go on your dead Grace face. Chucky separates Kyle from Andy so he can bully the poor kid. Snap out of it! Yeah, cut like you never seen a dead body before. He holds Andy at knife point and they hop a ride on the Newsy Express. Kyle gets in her car for a chase scene where somehow a doll and a small child don't tumble out of a speeding vehicle. <laughs> and I'm speeding. Damn, truck driver. Why are you doing 80 on a service road? Kyle gets him to pull over so she can follow Andy and Chucky into the best I possible still gotta setting bro. I gotta for a Chucky the car. finale. The good guy doll factory. Her bad entrance kicks off 15 whole minutes in this place. I love it! This was the setting for the ending in Mancini's original draft for the first movie. Like I said, he's great at recycling unused ideas. His original script also had Chucky attacking a teacher and more focus on the toy company. Two ideas that both made their I gotta way into finish the sequel. It, bro. The Clay Pals Company's Good Guy Factory has a freaking maze of dolls in it. It's basically the shining hedge maze with good guys. Why has Halloween Horror Nights not done this yet? Chucky knocks out Andy with a Strike and gets to saying the magic words. Howdy, do we? Follow your stomach.
I'll in your stomach. Give me the power, I beg of you. Yep, in come the Chucky clouds. I should have known. Felt it in my knees yesterday. Chucky actually does his incantation for the full duration, but after it's over, Andy's still Andy, and Chucky's still Chucky. <laughs> Sorry, pal. No 80s I would have been mad. Shenanigans for you. No! Imagine being you stuck in a really doll for the rest of your life. You really can't how amazing Brad Dorif is as Chucky. What? <laughs> Kyle and Andy regroup and say their secret trust words. Andy! Kyle! Okay, I guess they're not that secret. They get lost in this crazy <laughs> work hazard of a floor setup that would make a forklift like, driver go insane. So a bunch of fun factory stuff gets used, making the most out of this location. Andy could just be like fingers in those DZ instead rollers. I want to be frustrated to like he got it stomach ache from drinking milk. Way shorter than 127 oh hours. Oh my he god. He frees himself and makes some lemonade, going from good guy to groovy guy with a knife hand. Kyle and Andy are able to get through the Geonosian battle droid factory, but are unable to find any exit. Can you say triangle shirtwaist factory? Their disruption causes a pileup, alerting the one and only worker in this giant factory. The tech heads to the floor and clears the line, only for Chucky to slice him Ooh. back into the eye-placing machine, giving him a death that oh is permanently my seared into god. my memory. Absolutely hideous. The Good Guy Factory is another creation by production designer Evo Cristante. While the exterior shots used a factory in Long Beach, the interiors were all done on a massive soundstage in Santa Clarita. Cristante basically made a real factory from scratch, with a whole bunch of moving and working parts. His design helps make up for this movie's loss of on-location shooting. Chucky's next attack on the kids ends quickly, with him being stitched to a platform. They send the belt backwards and into a little incubator, which is apparently where they make their Mortal Kombat collector action figures. The melted heat that comes out isn't pretty, and sorry machine, I don't think hair will make it any better. But this pile of plastic's not Chucky. He's escaped, and now he manages to knock Kyle out with the technician's body, which he's somehow rigged up like a haunted house scare. Seriously, how'd he do that? A oh now legless God. Chucky wheels up to Andy and slashes at him, well, been stumping on his head crazy. supposedly made him famous. He gets trapped, and Andy opens up a pipe of, oh my God, it's DIP! The molten plastic covers Chucky, giving Andy enough that time boy, to save Chucky Kyle from the decapitation. Of course, Chucky's known to survive a cavalcade of attacks, Ugh. so he comes back for one more hideous, melty baby scare. Kyle sticks an air hose in his mouth, which fills his cheeks until he looks like Pops from regular show. Then his <laughs> blows up, and it's awesome. Seriously. Fantastic! <laughs> and the bloody, headless, melted doll corpse left behind? Oh man, chef's kiss. <laughs> this explosion is an homage to the ending of Brian De Palma's The Fury. It's even oh, yeah, shot the same, is. different angles. The movie ends with Andy and Kyle leaving the good guy factory you say, and Yo, heading what, how you know what that is? They, uh, <laughs> you know really what that one. is, what you talking about, How bro? many corpses did our returning good guy doll manufacture? Some? Let's grab Chucky and find out at the numbers. Oh, Chucky, how'd you get over here, man? Wait, you're not Chucky. You're Tommy! Ah! <laughs> Pretty funny. There were eight kills in Child's Play. Kill baby. Three women and five men, including oh Chucky my the God. Dog. So If you like... give him credit for the technician killed oh, in the eight. beginning, then we can close. add seven more kills to Chucky's count. Two more with a knife, electrocution and bludgeoning each, an asphyxiation, a neck snap, and a uh, eye gouge. We'll call that miscellaneous. <laughs> also, the sequel had three more kills than the first movie. We'll track that too. With a runtime of 84 minutes, we had to kill on average every Pretty good 10 movie. and a half minutes. I'll give the Golden Chainsaw for I like these because you don't gotta watch the movie. Turned into Kimmy Goodman by a good guy. This kill impacted me more than any other I can think of, except for maybe Drew Barrymore in Scream and the Jason X face smash. Dol Machete for Lamest okay, Scream go to isn't Joanne, a, Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, Scream isn't a good movie. Parody is way better than a movie. Yo, let's just keep real here, Dead Meat, aka James clock crystal turned black. The whole thing is kind of goofy looking, even if I appreciate the sewing sound effects used to build tension. And for Chucky movies, I'm giving out the Facts. champion chuckle for funniest part. This time it goes to the traffic stop instant because of Brad Dourif's I need hilarious a chili dog delivery. right now. What's your name, buddy? Chucky. <laughs> And that's it. Child's Play 2 came out in 1990, and while I once said it was my favorite of the series, I think now it might be tied with the original. They mm. both rule though. Until yeah. next time, I'm James A. Janice. This has been the Kill Count. This has been a Kill, kill count. count. I don't know. I don't want to be spoiled, James. Thank you for the video, though, James. Always a nice guy, James. Love you, James.